turn of the century marked the peak of a great era in American history, a magical era that possessed powers so great that it created what seemed to be a world of someplace else. A world of awesome giants that whirled screaming riders up and down twisted paths that seemed to touch the very edge of space. Streaking past bright colors and blurred images to a land of fantasy, Magnificent horses, prancing to the music of band organs, take their passengers to strange faraway places. Warm and friendly places that offered relief from the tensions of reality. The sweet fragrance of cotton candy and candied apples fill the air. The soft hum of excitement. The distant shrieks from the top of mammoth roller coasters as other visitors begin their journey to the amusement parks of the past. Amusement parks date back to the beginning of recorded history, and man, with his natural fun-loving instincts, has used these parks to gather with his fellow beings to fulfill his need for merrymaking. In search for ways to quench his natural craving for fun, he invented ingenious devices to provide more thrilling outlets. Thus, the roller coaster was born. The earliest recorded coasters were built in Russia. They were artificial slopes covered with ice and used as toboggan slides. Down through the years, scores of coaster-type devices made their appearances in amusement parks around the world. Early American coasters were known as scenic or switchback railroads because they had a lot of friction and were slow. In 1904, the Hyatt Roller Bearing Company came out with a new device for reducing friction. It was called the roller bearing. Coaster builders of that day called their cars Hyatt Roller Bearing Coasters and later shortened it to Roller Coasters. The new roller coasters gained in popularity. Bigger, more thrilling rides were built and became the highlight of a visit to an amusement park. Overshadowed by the new concept of outdoor entertainment, the traditional turn-of-the-century amusement parks dwindled. Seeming to have outlived their usefulness, mammoth roller coasters began falling in the path of progress. The designers and builders who had dedicated their lives to the construction of these great giants slipped into antiquity. It seemed the beginning of an end to this great era. <laughs> Now, as part of a major expansion program, Six Flags Incorporated made plans to build a monument to this great American era. A new section will be added to one of its modern outdoor amusement complexes at Six Flags Over Georgia in Atlanta. After months of planning, construction began. Materials were shipped in from all parts of the United States. Foundations were laid, and the challenge began. Electricians, carpenters, iron workers, engineers, crane operators, truck drivers, hundreds of top construction workers band together, all with a single goal, to build the highest, longest, and fastest roller coaster in the world. Construction of a roller coaster presents unusual problems. To supervise such a vast undertaking, Six Flags searched out John Allen of the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. John Allen is the last of the great roller coaster builders. This coaster at Six Flags will be the 16th of his long, colorful career. I just celebrated my 46th wedding anniversary. What do you know? So I've almost been in the business as long as I've been married. Being introduced to the amusement industry at an early age, combined with the experience gained with the Toboggan Company, makes John Allen invaluable to the success of this project. Well, my father was a traveling insurance man, and he took me to, he specialized in amusement parks for insurance. 
So I got an opportunity to uh, ride all the rides and to play all the penny arcade machines, but I was always fascinated with the roller coaster, what made them go. I uh, remark every once in a while, I can teach you how to design a roller coaster in six hours. Founded in 1902 in the midst of quaint beauty, the Philadelphia Toboggan Company goes unnoticed by the average visitor to Germantown, Pennsylvania. I don't know what I can tell you. Been with the company a long time. All I can say about the Philadelphia Toboggan Company is that over a period of years, uh, everybody in it, all of us, has struggled to make it uh, uh, a good company, a company with integrity. It was here in the former stable of an old estate that 134 hand-carved carousels were created by master craftsmen. Their tools, now neglected, lay dust-covered with disembodied half-finished masterpieces. The art is lost, the artists are gone, but neither will be forgotten by the countless number that have experienced the pleasures of a journey into fantasy on one of their magnificently carved carousels. In 1904, the Philadelphia Toboggan Company designed and built its first roller coaster and has, to date, completed 133 of this nation's most famous. Building the coasters uh, years ago, I mean, it was a, I would call it like a hit and miss kind of a thing in order to get the shapes and forms and the dips and the rides and things like that. And I like modern things. I don't like old time things. After they'd get them built, they'd just stand off on the side and say, well, this is too high, that's too low, this curve is not well enough. Uh, we say, well, we're, we're developing new things, but actually all we're doing is, uh, is putting modern day technology into, into old things. But uh, since Mr. Allen got into the thing, we got into it more scientifically. Yeah. He's one of the most wonderful guys I've ever been associated with, I'll tell you that, or I could never put up with him for 37 years. We had an eighth of an inch interference. He's a remarkable fella. He got uh, four layers of paint on each board where it joined, so it built it up a little bit. You know, he always come up with an answer. And I'll give it to you quick. You know, that may be the uh, electrical brush context. And even if he's wrong, he'll fight his way, he'll come out on top anyway. No, Vaseline has a happy faculty of transmitting current. I give him all the credit for the revolutionizing the methods of building the coasters because now we really have them down scientifically. Okay, Don. Right. So long. Well, it's a... Uh... One of the things that's difficult to understand, I guess, in the, in the design factor of uh, roller coasters are that we, we work to very, very close tolerances. So it's difficult to convey this idea when you, when you see that structure and see how large it is and the amount of space and area that it takes up, that we are concerned about an eighth of an inch. I always tell contractors and builders that are going to work on these things, I said, well, if you miss a living room by six inches, it only means that the customer's going to get a larger or smaller living room. But in a roller coaster, we can feel an eighth of an inch. We're taking the track, and we have already measured the rail up here on the coaster. We take it, bring it down here, bend the track, and we bend four feet at a time. After we've got it bent, we lay it out for them to take up on the track to, to uh, put in place. Well, of course, the track is made out of seven-ply lumber. It's strong. It's easy to construct out of the lumber. The lumber is treated. It'll last a long time. We use tie beams to keep the track spread to a gauge, the same as a railroad would do. The structure, of course, is merely to support the track. We put more or less structure under the track where it's needed. Where we have high stresses, we put more structure. The 110-foot structure being constructed of wood forced most of the carpenters into unfamiliar territory. Carpenters, unlike steel workers, rarely work at such heights. First two or three days, 
I just couldn't get used to it. My legs and everything was real sore. Went home the first night, sat down on the couch. When I went to get up, I looked to see if my safety belt was fastened. I'd been used to checking it all during the day when I'd get ready to move and I'd unhook. I even kept it up when I got home. You get used to it after a while. The awesome working conditions, often at dizzying heights, were endured. And with the structure and track nearing completion, excitement mounted in anticipation of the first unmanned test run. Unlike most amusement rides, the roller coaster depends on one of the first forces known to man as a source of power. Newton was the first one, of course, when the apple hit him on the head. That started it all by the law of gravity, and this is what this ride is. It's a gravity ride. There's only a few formulas of Newton's law we use. Everybody thinks that weight may be a part of it. Weight is no part of it. I don't use weight at all in my calculations. Uh, weight would be more concerned with energy, which we're not concerned with. It's also concerned with momentum, and although we're concerned with momentum, as a rule, momentum is concerned with energy. What we're concerned with here is velocity, pure and simple. The real trick is taking care of the forces that are developed. This here track here is strong enough to hold a boxcar. It'll be hitting 85 miles an hour coming down the back of that hill that cliff, they can't afford to have it go sideways. In a gravity ride, high speeds are necessary for the car to complete its run around the track. The design of the car is extremely important. The Philadelphia Toboggan Company has, over the years, compiled designs of many famous coaster builders, and today manufactures a car that is absolutely safe. Exchanging new ideas in design is one of the things that has made the amusement industry one of the oldest in history. I probably am a prodigy of a great many famous uh, coaster builders. Uh, John Strickler, who was a famous, L.A. Thompson, these are all dead now. Herb Smeck, Jimmy Martz, incidentally Jimmy's still alive. Shirley Watkins, who's still alive. My name is James L. Martz, M-A-R-T-Z, don't forget the Z. <laughs> and I've been in the business since 1917 been all over the country and built all, a lot of different rides in different places, a lot of different parks, parks that some people today don't even know existed in this day and age. My name is Shirley Watkins, and uh, I've been with the roller coasters for a long while. Well, every spring or in the winter, I always had a job building coasters someplace up until lately. I helped build the first coaster on that went down there in Coney Island. <laughs> well, there was never any, oh, you didn't have any plans or nothing like that. You just went back in and, uh, and you did it. <laughs> so, we built the twisted ones and all kind, and, and then I come back and I always kept coming back saying, build me one straight out and back and just take it up as high as we can as we there and drop it down and let it run let it run just let it fly and that's what we built <laughs> that was a honey when i built that and I, I got done with it i usually always rode the first car myself but this time i didn't when the car came back in, I looked at it and it came in through the over the brakes and it just came in and there was just a cloud of dust. And I, I looked at those people and I thought, oh, I wonder what got here. And they were all had their mouths wide open and laughing. Well, I don't think they'll dare build another one. I still think that's the best ghost that was ever built. <laughs> a lot of the old coasters are gone, a lot of the old parks are gone. But there'll be other coasters. Somebody wants them, somebody has to have them. It's a new generation. You know what I mean? 
We build them different, put different thrills into them than what they used to have, and make them much faster. The kids want speed today. We will go from the top of the incline back into the brakes in about 53 seconds. And that's moving pretty good. But this is a big one, and it'll be the largest, highest in the United States when it goes, and we hope it's going to go pretty soon. They're going to scream on this one. After a breathtaking 105-foot drop, the cars will travel the three-quarter mile track at an average speed of 57 miles per hour. After completion, this coaster will provide millions of fun seekers with thrills that can only be compared to the famous coasters of the amusement parks of the past. In construction, roller coasters have always been treated as individuals, each having characteristics not found in any other. Builders never know if their design will work until the day of completion. Like guts. Like a new building. Uh, architects have to have a lot of guts, you know, to deviate from the standard. And a lot of times they get into trouble with it, and I get into trouble too, but uh, how are you going to make progress without it? New ideas are what you need. Imagination and new ideas. Hardships of a long, cold winter, in addition to spring floods, were taken in stride. And after many months of long, hard hours of work by determined men, the great American scream machine nears completion. For every job, you learn something. Yeah, I learned that this should be my last. But he hadn't built the last one. Don't let him kid you. <laughs> I've said that the last three. He'll build. He's like me. We'll be in it till we're... We're gone. That's the only answer to that. Dying harness. Boy, I'll tell you, I got, I'm getting double cholly horses now. I'm getting cholly horses in my legs, my arms, and back. Pressure's on, you know. Uh, I think on account of that full-page ad they got in the paper. <laughs> job is making an old man out of me. If I was a young fella, you know, I'd just say, yeah, I have no problem and everything, but I'm old enough to know that there's always problems. Uh, they got the car blocked. That wants to go. Turn on the screen machine. Hit it. All right, that's good. They asked me if I take the first ride. I said, yes, if I can beat all the other people to the punch, but I'm getting a little weak because most of the men that work on this all this time want the first ride. I certainly am. I'm going to try to be one of the first. Yeah, I'm going to ride it. I know I'm going to ride it. I'm going to ride it. Oh, certainly. Ride it? Sure. If I help put it up, I should be willing to ride it, shouldn't I? I didn't dare say not. Second time, I'd definitely like to ride it. <laughs> I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> I don't care much for roller coasters. <laughs> Let alone ride it, I just want to see it run. To see it run has always been the ambition of workmen on every coaster construction site. This one was no exception. Every man felt the importance of the day, for it was the day of the first run, and the tasks of a thousand details began. test is does it go around and bring us back home <laughs> that's a real test if we get back home it's a good roller coaster if things go well it will be an exciting climax to the months of hard work will it go or will there be costly and time-consuming corrections i think it's going to run i think it's going to run uh, probably better than we anticipate that it will the ride looks nice even if it isn't going to work it looks pretty it has nice curves to it. Well, that's my standard answer to all the customers, you know. If they ask me if it's going to work, I say, I don't know, but it looks pretty. <laughs> the day of the test grew dark. The tired crew stopped only long enough to regain their strength before pushing on to meet their deadline.
While the crew rested, the structure, now silent, patiently held its tracks that were now completed and ready to accept the car that will bring life to this giant from the past. The station house teemed with activity as a tired but determined crew pushed on into the night. John Allen's calm, professional attitude seemed to give confidence to the crew as they readied the car for its journey into the darkness to mate with its structure and give birth to the great American screen machine. Okay, Charles, we're all clear here and uh, we're gonna run it, so keep an eye out there. Well, uh, now 19 minutes till 10 o'clock. Now that thing goes, it's moving. Speed before we get to the top, so we get some velocity up there. It takes a while for it to build up steam. All right, John. All right. There it goes. Great. We ought to have a Confederate flag nailed on the front. It made it. It's on top. Oh, Man, what do you think of that? Oh. She's coming this way. Here she comes. Here she comes. Coming down. <laughs> yeah. I'll say. Better get that station clear. <laughs> Never get on again in my life, I swear. Well, that's what I thought it was. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. You wouldn't want to hear what I got to say. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's my best one because I hope it's my last one. <laughs> That's the best part of it. Well, leave me alone so I can retire. In peace with my Medicare card. <laughs> Now a reality, the great American scream machine stands as a monument to the famous coaster builders of the past. John Strickler, Bill Marquette, L.A. Thompson, Herb Schmeck, Frank Hoover, James L. Martz, Shirley Watkins, and John Allen. At Six Flags Over Georgia, these men and one great American era will not be forgotten. Write it as though you're reading your morning paper over a cup of coffee. That's the way to ride a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs>